item that's been being talked about the most these past couple of weeks. Uh, it has to do with the pinball cabs and specifically with the uh, Arcade 1-Up pinball cab. We've been finally getting a dump of information on that. And you've got one in your house, or at least the prototype in your house. Yep. I do. Um, I was sent a machine back in July and uh, showed up in a box from direct from the factory. No instructions, no anything about how to put it together. Because <laughs> State. I was a bit of a guinea pig because yeah yeah there's there's a picture um, I was a bit of a guinea pig because uh, these you know RK went up they know their stuff they know how to put it together quickly and you know can do that but like hey uh, can someone just you know, on arrival what's the experience like putting this together do the pieces all fit is it becoming functional so I got kind of like you know day one version and I've been tinkering with it for a, a lot I've been making a lot of suggestions based on the machine but I love it and um, you know it, it we could. I don't know what questions you have, but I could a lot. I could just give you whatever you want. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll throw. I'm sure Jared has plenty of questions on this. I'm going to throw this one out first because I know it's kind of in one of the differences between this cabinet and the other manufacturer's cabinet. This has the acrylic top. Curious, how easily or difficult would it be for somebody to swap out the acrylic for their own piece of glass? if that was something that they wanted to do. Take you two minutes. Okay. So it's just a slide out piece, basically. Yep. Okay. There, there you yeah, go, folks. You know, because look, we, we built these. So uh, with knowing it, you know, these are going out in a certain format. They're not wirelessly, well, wirelessly connected. And we sacrificed um, some graphics, you know, some visual fidelity for performance. So uh, we want them to be upgradable if you'd like to. We're also keeping in mind our price point. So we could be at retail. Um, so we, I mean, we didn't just like, Hey, what do, 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 I mean, we thought about this, like a lot of this, so <laughs> you can unscrew, you pull out the little metal pieces, you can take the glass off and put it in your own glass. If you want, it takes you two minutes. Cause that's uh that right there, I believe is the tray that holds the acrylic, if I'm not mistaken. Right. It is, that acrylic is just sitting on top of there. It's not glued to it. It's not like silicone to it. So you can just take that off. Okay. Easy peasy. Jared, yeah. your turn. Okay, so um, I I think uh, when I'd be I was looking through all the news sources and John D was talking about the the product, we were going between um, there was a word of transducers and solenoids, and initially I got quite excited by the concept of transducers to sort of convey the the feeling of the ball rolling um, and stuff like that, but then I noticed in the final build it's confirmed that we got solenoids doing the haptic feedback um, mm -hmm. in the cabinet. So it's just solenoids, isn't it now? It's solenoids, correct. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, that's, that's fair enough. So um, the, is the that, whole Just real quick, is that what rolling. the little black box there on the uh, right hand side, just beyond the plunger, is that the solenoid itself? Um, yeah, I believe that, that. So we have four solenoids in there, and that looks, there's two on that are you can't see in the, further back in the box, like down to the base, and then you have the two on the sides yep. for the uh, flippers. Okay. Because I know yeah. that that was initially, okay. our kid went up and said that there were only three, and then your video said four, so that's, people are like, ooh, four, that's better. <laughs> Look, we, I mean, we held them to the fire, so we said, <laughs> no, it doesn't feel right, and they said, oh, okay, so I, I mean, you know, but it was, that, that's the beauty of it, is like, we actually have a capable hardware partner, and we have got a capable software c company, so, you know, we can actually make something that feels good. Right. So on the subject of haptics, so you would, you stand, stand in front of this thing and played it now. Like, what does it feel like to actually stand in front of this thing and flip it? Like, what is the feedback like? Yeah, it's, it's strong. I mean, we, it's not, and, and that's the thing. It, like, it, it feels like, you know, you can feel it. I don't know how to, I don't know how to say it in the words. And that was in the mm. video. I went, I did that segment so many times. I was like, I don't know how to say it, but like, you can feel it. Um, How's it feel? Does it? Could you describe? I guess we're comparing things. When you hold like an Xbox controller and you get the vibration in the Xbox controller, how does it differ from that feeling when you're actually playing the cabinet? It's not a rumble. It's a it's a click. I mean, it is like it's to, actual to, impact. Yeah, yeah. It's not the rumble kind of feel like in a controller. It's a it's an impact. So when a ball hits a bumper, like if you impact, yeah. I, mm, I guess cool. It's Basically, exactly like a solenoid because it's that that hammer punch and not just yeah. a rolling wave that would be in your controller. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
How does it? Um, how does that feel though? Because I know that again with your full size cabs that you've got out there, uh, I believe you have uh, solenoids in those too, correct? Yep. Yeah, there's solenoids in those. So how does um, it compare to a full size machine like that? Yeah, th that's a good. That's a good question. It actually feels the same. It, it feels the same as a larger format machine. Okay. That's pretty cool. That is really yeah. cool. And just so you know, uh, and I didn't go over this in the video, but in the settings, like we give you the option to turn off the solenoid. So if you want like a night mode, you know, it'll be quiet. Um, oh, that's neat. <laughs> that actually <laughs> night flows mode. into some, not night mode. <laughs> so yeah, the, quiet, the other thing, babies, whatever, we don't want to wake up your, your little Yeah, seat. or you live in apartments, that would be, uh, <laughs> I'd imagine having <laughs> solenoids hammering away constantly might be a, a problem. Are there any swappable graphics? Uh, like if you, in the case of Attack from Mars, if you didn't want the back box to be Attack from Mars, but you want to be one of the other tables there, are there is there the ability to swap in a different graphic there? You could take that thing apart and put whatever you want in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's not necessarily something that was uh, in, like, it's not shipping with extra v items that we know of, I should say. It's not shipping with anything. Look, this, this first... We had a goal in mind uh, to get units out for this holiday season, and yeah. we absolutely had to do that. Along the way, we discovered a lot of things that would be cool to do in the future, and we will do those things in the future. But we also kept in mind as we realized all that, hey, we need to make sure that these first machines can also be brought up to speed if people want them and they don't want to buy another machine. So mm -hmm. um, that was very common and very important because um, – this is a long, you know, th this is just step one. And like, it, I think about when phones launched, like the very first phone and the next year there's a better phone and the next year there's a better phone, right? It's just how hardware and software go. But keeping in mind that we want the people who embrace us the very first time through, give you every option and opportunity to just, you know, hopefully a very low cost to just keep upgrading um, your machine. That is excellent news. I think uh, people will be quite happy to hear that they can just put a new board in. And I mean, you, you've done it. It doesn't seem that difficult to do. Um, so yeah, that's excellent news. It was enjoyable. It was like a big kid Lego project. And my daughter was uh, my Scarlett, who's my, my gamer. She loved it. She was working with me on it. It was, it was a lot of fun. I got a question about, um, uh, the, you know, this, cause I'm a nerd, um, <laughs> the frame rate, <laughs> the frame rate and resolution of the, the cabinet end screen. So we know it's 60 Hertz, uh, 60 frames per second. Um, and that's good. Um, what about the screen resolution? Is it 720 or 1080? It's 720. 720, right. Yep. And we did, we, we sacrificed um, some visual fidelity for performance uh, with pinball. It's, if you have, you know, <laughs> frame rate issues, uh, the game, you know. So you, you drop the resolution, it's an easy fix. Yeah. That being um, said, on a 24 inch monitor, uh, it's much more forgiving at 720. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. between 720 and 1080, I suppose, if you start going larger than your own C seeing pixels. So, you know, just you kind of touched on, on wireless, like functionality for leaderboards and things like that. Um, look, it is easy. People are asking, why don't you have wireless? Well, yeah, we could put a wireless receiver or a dongle, anything in there and make it wireless. But th th what does that mean? I mean, the experience that you go online and if, there, if there's a store, like what are you looking at? How are you connecting? that is just a massive undertaking in infrastructure and a live service and another platform. I have to go get approvals like, Hey, licensors, Zen is now going to have our own store. We're going to have our own platform, uh, like distribution of content and protection for piracy. Do we have user accounts? I mean, like you don't, oh, just, well. yeah. you don't just, you don't just launch a, yeah, it is wireless. I mean, like we would be still probably next year before we got anything out like this time next year, but how much store could be ready in a on, true online service. So why didn't we do wireless? I mean, there's a lot of really good, you know, reasons but um i think in our roadmap you can see where this will go it's funny because mm -hmm. i saw uh john d in an interview where he was saying yeah the, the actual part to make it wireless that's dirt cheap he goes but then you got to create the network and you got to staff the network and you got to have all these people programming the network and making sure it's functioning and he's like there's where your cost is <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh look what we're launching is i mean we're going to see, right? We, we need a little bit of a proof of concept knowing that there is a demand. People do want to buy something like that. You know, people want to invest in this. Um, so we, we're putting forward what I think is a fantastic product at a price point that's unbelievable. And people say, well, why is this price point so much higher than the others? Well, keep in mind, guys, uh, Arcade One Up is officially licensed product and that carries an overhead in itself, yeah. which is more higher than another company per se who's got lower, lesser known or less popular, at least lesser expensive licenses 
or they think they can get access to the licensed content without having to pay for it. So, yeah. you know, it, like this is a legitimate business enterprise to, uh, <laughs> so, so there's a lot involved. The price that, we're, that we hit is actually incredible. So um, in the wireless stuff, come later. That's where it's, I, I'm amazed that, uh, obviously it seemed like there was a game of chicken between the four companies. Uh, who was going to announce their price first? Who was going to announce launch first? Um, who was going to show their render first? And the fact that everybody was kind of aiming right at, I mean, I think they're all within $100 of each other, basically. Um, mm -hmm. So it's incredible that, uh, obviously, to go from this price point at, you know, five to $600, and then if you want to go to your next step of virtual cab, suddenly you're at $2,000. So yeah, it's amazing, the, the price jump. That it's, it's a very good entry level to at least entice people try it out yeah like, to work out whether like a pinball machine in your home is actually something you want like before it was a two thousand dollar experiment now it's you know <laughs> five or six hundred dollar us experiment which you know i think i could probably swallow that a little bit easier <laughs> what, we're gonna, what we're gonna find is uh you know these are gonna be look if you're a hardcore pinball player and you've come up that was a part of your childhood and it was part of you growing up in arcades you're going to look at this machine and you might think a certain thing about it, but I'll tell you what, someone from my kid's generation who's never been around a pinball machine and they see this thing, it it's like, a, it's magnetic and they get their first mm. pinball experience. And I think more pinball is just better. Like the future of this is, is all, all ships rise. So this is built for a very specific purpose for, you know, fit in the home, be affordable, be fun. <laughs> Like I think we've accomplished that. Uh, we're we're very curious to see. I mean, from all indications, uh, all these pre-orders of the, all these cabinets are just going to fly. Um, so I mean, it, it. We keep on saying that this is nothing but a good thing for digital pinball because yes. the more eyeballs that get on this sort of thing means the more people that are going to seek it out. You know, on their consoles or on Steam and go, oh my gosh, look at all these other games. And then you throw on the form factor of an actual cab in your home. I, I think it's just primed to explode, which is why it's so exciting to hear you guys uh, tout that you have this 10 year plan. I honestly believe, I mean, on, here on the RK1 upside, you know, I think a lot of people do want a pinball machine in their home and they have different ideas of what that might look like based on price and footprint. And I think if you reduce the size and you make it affordable, I think those are the two things that have been blocking mass market pinball machine adoption in the home. Um, and that's why you see such a race to get here. Like all these companies all of a sudden trying to get their, their, their piece and their share. Um, and that's fine. I think that that's fantastic. There should be options like more options is better for the market. Competitive mix companies, you know, have to do better and provide a better proposition, but the long-term health of pinball, I think that this is a major thing that can really invigorate an, a whole new audience, like just grow a new fan base. My kids, like they enjoy pinball for a little bit on the Xbox, but I put this thing in Scarlet's room and like they play it every day and I don't even ask them to. They just, they like, dad, come on, can we play a game real quick? Like we haven't, we haven't played Fantastic Four yet. We want to play, you know? Um, and then we have a piece of their home. That's, that's very special. So we want to give them something that's really worth it, that they feel good about investing in.